The content of the Tandem Radio program and website is intended for general information purposes only. It's not designed to provide listeners with specific and personal financial, legal, counseling, professional service, or other advice. The views expressed by show hosts, their guests, and callers are their own and should not be construed in any way as opinions of Tandem Radio or the Bridge FM Network. Good morning and welcome to Tandem Radio. Be encouraged, you will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours, says Psalms 128.2. We are just excited to be with you this morning. We're here every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, bringing you the good news on business. And as we do each week, we bring in a special guest uh, who has a specific title that we talk about in their area of expertise. And uh, we have basically two goals on the show. Each week our goals are, number one, to point you in the direction of God's Word, to let you know that there is Scripture that pertains to your business and that God wants to be a part of your life 24-7, not just in your personal life and, and in your church life, but also in your business life as well. And he's actually written down words of wisdom in his holy word, his holy book, that uh, can guide you and direct you. And we hope to leave you with those things uh, every Saturday morning. And the second goal is to give you practical information that you can actually take to work with you Monday morning that will have an impact on what you do to help your business. And to help us do that each week, we bring in a guest. And this week's guest is Mark Griffin, who's an author and founder of in his name HR and he's a Christian human which is a Christian human resources company and uh, we have a lot to talk about with Mark but before we go there let's get into the scriptures today again the title for today is people treat them right that's the title of the show people treat them right and Mark is going to talk to us about that but let's start with scripture as we always do God puts these scriptures on my heart and uh, uh, we read them during the show and sometimes they make sense and tie right into the show and sometimes I wonder God what are you trying to tell us here but you know what he always ties it all together. By the end of the show, he makes it sound right. So we'll go with him on this. 2 Chronicles 2 7. Send me therefore a man skilled to work in gold and silver, bronze and iron, and in, and in purple, crimson, and blue yarn, and experience in the art of engraving, to work in Judah and Jerusalem with my skilled workers. Romans 4 4. Now to one who works, wages are not credited as a gift but as an obligation. And lastly, Colossians 3.23, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. And of course, those are all work-related scriptures, and we're going to talk more about them as we uh, introduce you to and get to know Mark Griffin, who is an author. He's got a new book coming out. He's also the founder of uh, In His Name HR, a Christian human resources company. Uh, Mark also does public speaking and has a new segment coming out that we're going to be excited to share with you, uh, an audio segment that uh, you're going to enjoy, I know, uh, that will be out every week, and we'll talk more about that later in the show. But right now, let's welcome Mark Griffin to the show. Mark, welcome. Well, thank you, Glenn. Uh, it's good to have you. And you're back again. You've been on the show before, so I guess we did something right. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. Why don't you refresh the uh, minds of our audience and tell us a little bit about Mark Griffin and your background. Sure. My name is Mark Griffin. I'm a human resource professional. I think you covered, uh, uh, I do own and manage a human resource consulting firm. Uh, I started the firm last April, and I've been very blessed. Uh, the firm has grown considerably over the last year. And uh, back in July, we were talking about uh, what God had put in my heart, and that's the, the model that I developed on how to build a kingdom-minded organization. And we joked a little bit on the, on the, um, on the uh, um, interview that I should write a book, and you said, come back when you write the book. So I'm back because I wrote the book between uh, uh, now and July. You mean somebody actually listens to my advice sometimes? That's amazing. <laughs> it was wise <laughs> well, that's great to know. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, so let's talk about your business background a little bit before we um, move on. Before you had in his name, what were you doing? Glenn, I've had an incredible career in human resources. I, if, I, if I could go back and change it, I wouldn't. I've worked for huge organizations with best practices like Quaker Oats Company and Merck and Kodak. And then the last seven years I've spent specifically working in Christian-owned companies and uh, developing my skills with those companies. Mm, that's excellent. So you went from corporate America to jumping into your own business now, and you have in his name. Tell us about that transition. What was it like going from working technically for someone else, now we're literally working for yourself. Well, there, there was really two steps. The, the, the first step was leaving the secular world of working for, for large corporations. I found it, uh, as an HR person, very difficult to live out my faith 
and, and work in a secular world because of uh, how everything needs to be politically correct. So I felt much more comfortable in a Christian-owned organization where people can be outward with their faith and share their faith with others, not in a way that, that uh, alienates people or offends people, but does it a uh, characteristic of the culture that that organization has. It, it was a, a very big step in faith to jump out, start a, start a human resource consulting firm in what I believe is probably the worst economy in, in the history of the United States. So, uh, but I felt the Lord leading me to do this. Mm. So, um, so you made this leap, and uh, I mean, obviously you have to have, in your case, especially with the kind of faith you have, you have to have God's blessing behind you to help you make this work. How did you handle, let's say, the secular idea of this? I mean, you went from literally a paycheck to no check. So uh, how did you make that transition? It, 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 again, was to lay everything down and trust the Lord. The, you know, the Lord really loves us and he cares for, for us. And he put this in my heart. And it was, I, I did struggle with it for several weeks, that am I making the right decision? But, you know, I always go back to the verse about the birds and the birds don't worry about what they're going to eat tomorrow and I thought you know what God loves us so much greater than the birds Amen. that I'm not going to worry and provision is going to occur and provision has occurred I, I, I won't deny there's been difficult times in the last year but at, at the end things have been absolutely fabulous and the next couple quarters look uh, very good as well. That's good to hear and uh, you know I just want to point out it, it, it may be obvious that some people may not be you've been very bold obviously in your faith you even named the company in his name HR so uh, how do you feel that's impacted what you're doing? I, I think it's been absolutely phenomenal I, I quite frankly was a little bit nervous but I felt called to do this my wife and I came up with the name of, of the firm and stepped out with it uh, formed the LLC and I, I originally thought, wow, I'm going to announce this and I'm outing myself as a Christian <laughs> to so many people in the secular world. I, I know senior vice presidents, executives at secular companies, and I thought, wow, I'm going to announce that I'm doing this and they're going to think I'm crazy that I lost my mind. And you know what? It, it was really on the contrary. I, I have had people come out that I know that aren't Christ followers that have sent me emails to say, Wow, Mark, this is awesome. I, I'm so proud of you that you're stepping out in your faith. So mm. where I thought I would offend people, I, I didn't offend them at all. <laughs> well, that's great to know. Um, so let's talk about that in, in His Name HR specifically. Tell us in a nutshell, what, is, what does In His Name HR do? In His Name HR specifically supports Christian-owned organizations or nonprofits. So uh, you'd have a company with roughly 50 employees or more. You can't afford to have a director or a VP of Human Resources. So you would hire my firm. We'd come in and we'd cover all your HR from soup to nuts. Uh, we do everything from you know analyzing what you're doing, uh, making sure that everything's legal and legit. We set up hiring processes. But most importantly, we help companies form their mission, vision, and their values for their organization. Mm, very interesting. So you actually drill down right to the level of the mission statement. Absolutely. We help them develop their mission statement, their vision statement, and their core values. And most importantly, I think what I'm most proud of is we include all the employees. So. Mm. I brainstorm with the management team, but I also go out and brainstorm with all the hourly people on second mm -hmm. shift. And then we do a little reconciliation. So as we're reconciling, the owner might want to add something into the, the statement that says we're a company founded on Christian principles. Well, that owner might be nervous to talk about that to the, the, the hourly workers. And I'm the conduit to take it to the hourly workers, present it. And if there's some folks that don't agree with it or, or find it slightly offensive, I can bridge the relationship with, well, this is true. This is what was founded. The company was, you don't have to believe in it. And they light up. The hourly employees light up. They're like, yeah, you're right. I don't have to believe in it, but I do know they're good Christian guys. So, yeah, I respect them. They should put it in. They're standing for their principles. So I get excited about that because you're sharing your faith in a non-offensive way and you're getting people on board with it. Mm, amen. Um, let me ask you this, you know, talking about mission statements, and, and obviously what's interesting here is you talked about that the companies are 50 employees and above. Do you see from the time they wrote the mission statement and just started the company to the time you get involved and they're 50 plus employees, 
Do you see a big deviation? Did oh, they absolutely. get on track? I, I, absolutely. The, the, the greatest difficulty for companies is they never integrate their mission, vision, values and get the buy-in for their employees. Mm. Employees need to know that they're part of something and why they're part of something. Right. So that's where the integration piece comes in. Mm. One of the things I do, and if you're a business owner out there, this may help you if you're not doing it. I have a mission statement and... Um, uh, also, um, uh, it's, it's more than just a mission statement. It's actually uh, some concepts of what we believe in. And I make every new employee sign off on that before I hire them. So I'll give them that mission statement during the interview process and let them know what it is. And I'll say one of the things we'll ask you to do is sign off an agreement on this. Uh, because if you can't agree with our mission, then maybe you're not a good fit for our family. You know? I, absolutely. That, that, that's one thing that I help business owners do is build that into their recruitment process. Mm -hmm. So as they're recruiting with people, that they are given the mission, the vision, and the values, and the applicants know what the company is about. They know that that's integrated within the company and that they need to be part of it. And if they're not going to be part of it, then they, they self-select not to move forward. And, and it's so important to do that. And I know we're coming up on a break and we got a lot to talk about. But in, the, in relevance to that, I just want to tell the average business owner out there, especially whether you're small or larger, um, it's so important to make sure that you stay true to your original mission and realize that, you know, slight minor things happening in your company as it grows can easily take you off track with that. So it's so important. I'm glad, Mark, that you uh, bring people back around to that. Thank you. And uh, the sooner they do that, the better. So if you're an owner out there and you haven't really gotten that mission statement out lately, dusted it off and said, hey, are we still on track with this or not? That might be a good tidbit for you today. You listen to Tandem Radio Live. This is your host, Glenn DeLakin, and I'm excited to have our guest on uh, back again, actually, due to the popular demand, uh, Mark Griffin. And uh, he's going to talk about his new book he's got coming out soon. He's going to talk about his new audio segment program he's got coming out soon uh, that we'll have uh, uh, online for you uh, before you know it. And uh, so much more to cover today about HR. And then, of course, the topic today is people. Treat them right. And I want to say that's a two-way street. That's not just about um, uh, owners and employees or employees to owners. It's all the way around. So we're going to talk more about that in a minute. And, uh, again, don't forget TandemRadio.com. You might be listening right now on TandemRadio.com. Hopefully you're digging around and finding all the resources in there. There's so much information there, including archive shows and uh, um, uh, guest information and links to people like Mark who can help you with your business. Uh, you want to check it all out on TandemRadio.com. We'll be back right after these words. Listen up close and stay tuned. Hi, my name is Cooper Ford from Tandem Radio, the good news on business. I want to thank you for joining us for this episode. Hopefully you've been getting some fantastic insights from Glenn and our featured guest. While we're taking this break, I want to introduce you to our website at TandemRadio.com where there's a wealth of information focusing on bringing Christian principles into the business world. First of all, we have some of our other archive shows that are on there where you can see some of our past guests and listen to their shows. Second, we also have Ask Tandem, which is our shorter video segments focusing on specific questions related to uh, faith and the workplace. And finally, we have our sponsors, like-minded businesses and professionals who not only share our mission, but also who want to serve you. So check it all out at TandemRadio.com. If you want to get in touch with us, you can also email us at info at TandemRadio.com. That's info at TandemRadio.com. And we look forward to hearing from you. So thanks again for joining us. Let's get back to Glenn and the show. God bless. Well, welcome back to Tandem Radio Live. This is your host, Glenn DeLakian. And uh, we've got a great show today talking about people, which is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, people, treat them right is the topic here on the Good News on Business today. And, and to speak about that is uh, HR expert Mark Griffin, who's uh, not only been in HR in corporate America, but also owns his own business in his name, HR. Uh, he's even gone as far as to write a book called How to Build Kingdom-Minded Organizations and uh, also has an audio program segment that's going to start here with us soon. And um, I just wanted to uh, uh, introduce Mark to the audience again because he's been back once before and he's just been uh, a great resource and uh, we know he knows HR. So 
On that note, uh, we talked a lot about um, your faith and how sure. you got to bring uh, In His Name HR to fruition. Let's talk about some of your clients now, obviously. Uh, now, in the past, you've worked with some of the Fortune 500 companies, and we know about that. But in your company now, in your current capacity, let's talk about some of the types of businesses that you work with. Sure. I have a variety of businesses that I, that I work with. I don't focus on just one segment. Like, I just don't focus on insurance or manufacturing. My background is so rich in a variety of different uh, fields and support in HR. I can really support any any company that has people. So, mm -hmm. um, my my clients have 50 or more employees, as I described on, on the first segment. Um, to give you an idea, I have one company that manufactures furniture, hardwood furniture, uh, handmade, custom here in the United States. It's one of the few companies left in the United States that's making hardwood uh, furniture. Another company that I, I support uh, does trailer repairs and refurbishing. They, they own a franchise. They have uh, well over 50 employees, and, and they're doing well. I also support a uh, nonprofit ministry that has uh, well over 1,500 missionaries all over the world and 100 corporate employees. Mm. So uh, the, the, the businesses that I'm supporting are a cross-section. Um, I, I not only have supported businesses through my firm in central Pennsylvania, but I reach out into other states as well. I have a, a client in Ohio. Mm. Now, are all of these Christian-owned businesses? Yes, sir. Do you see, considering your name, right, considering what your convictions are, do you see secular businesses asking about what you're doing? or you I, 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 I do. I, I've had secular businesses call and inquire, and I think, um, and, and this is actually covered in, in my book, I think secular businesses get peaked interest because there's um, a perception of v value and mm -hmm. quality and trustworthiness. So if my firm is brought in to help them with recruitment, uh, we're going to do our best jobs and we're going to bring them the best candidates and we're going to do the, the great job at, at a very good price point. So I, I think when secular companies see it, uh, they gravitate towards it. In that respect, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but in that respect, let's say you get a company that's clearly not Christian owned. Not that they're unethical or moral or anything like that. I'm just saying they're clearly not Christian owned. Do you, do you try to inject your Christian concepts into what they're doing? Absolutely not. Okay. No, I, I'm not interested in doing that. Mm -hmm. it, it's inappropriate, and, and I keep that separate. Right. Um, they know who I am. They know who my background is, and I would never uh, cross that line mm -hmm. with, with a secular company. It's just not professional. So as long as they have the right values and so forth, obviously you don't want to do business with people who have the right values. No, as long as they no. have the right values and, and they're on track with those types of things from the way they treat their They're going to get world-class support for Amen. sure. Okay, good. Good for you. Um, so let's talk about, uh, you, you mentioned a couple of companies there. What do you think with all these companies you've been working with, what's one of your greatest accomplishments with one? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm always doing business development. I'm, I'm prospecting constantly. I'm meeting with potential clients. And, and one of the greatest hurdles that I get from chief executive officers or uh, owners or, or boards, you know, why do we want to pay you to do this? Uh, we've never done it before. What, you know, does it really matter? so on and so forth. And I always sell the fact that I can bring savings to the organization. That, mm. That's the, the, the greatest selling point. And this one organization that I was entertaining working for was very hesitant again. We, we really don't want to spend the money. We haven't used it before. I know we have a lot of issues, but we'll go ahead and bring you on board. And I, I was selling them all along that there, there could be savings. Well, they allowed me once I got into the organization to roll my sleeves up and start looking at all their administrative costs, right. the way they do payroll, their benefits, uh, the way they hire, and very quickly over a very short period of time, it was just weeks, we made a decision to switch brokers because of their medical benefits and they're going to realize a six-figure savings over a period of time. Wow. So they immediately came back and said, well, thank goodness we have you here. We can use this money. Mm -hmm. And I feel great because um, I'm bringing value to the organization. It makes right. it easier for them to write me a check. There you go. They give you a percentage of savings? No. No. <laughs> no. And that's one thing. It, it's, it's great that you asked that, Glenn, because... I, I, I don't do that. Uh, many, many, many consultants will bring in their own brokers or mm -hmm. bring their own payroll systems in and they get a percentage of the sales. 
I will never do that. And it's the same thing with recruitment. I don't charge a 25 or 30 percent headhunter fee. Right. I, I charge an hourly rate, a reasonable rate, and we bring the best person in. And it works for us. I, I, initially, people thought it might be uh, dangerous to do it this way, uh, but I, it's been very beneficial for us. Well, let's talk about recruitment. How far down do you drill down? Do you actually interview the people and, and act, literally hire them? Yeah, we, we, I actually have uh, people on staff mm -hmm. uh, that I've known for years that have HR experience. Um, Heather Weller is, is a person that works with me. Uh, she's got over 10 years of HR experience, and she's a dynamo at recruitment. She does a wonderful job of screening. So we take over the recruitment process. We run the ads. We screen the candidates. We make sure that the salary's there, the reason for them coming. Right. We share the mission, vision, values. I typically meet with final candidates if they're at the managerial level or above. Mm. If necessary, Heather will le meet with the hourly candidates if that's what the client would like. Okay. But we never really bring a candidate to a company until they're fully vetted. Okay. Companies love it because they don't have to spend the time doing right, it. Exactly. Nobody likes to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, let's talk about that. I mean, obviously these employees have a relationship with the company. And, uh, you know, employer-employee relationship, two-way street, right? Um, what are you finding in that area? I mean, do you, do you find animosity between them? Do you find a better blending these days between the employer and the employee? It, it, it depends which company, and it depends how open the company is with, with their employees, mm -hmm. and it depends really on the selection process that was put in place years ago. But overall, there's a lot of distrust uh, in both directions, from, from the employer to the employees, mm -hmm. that all employees are lazy and they don't want to do a good job and they don't want to focus 100%. Mm -hmm. And you got a lot of employees that think that owners are misers and won't share, share the, the, the benefits with them. So there is a lot of bridging there. Most importantly, I think, is when the owners and the company executives share goals and objectives with the employees. The employees have some input on that, mm -hmm. but then the employees can have some type of reward for doing a great job. Well, I, I think it's so important um, that people realize that uh, you know our scriptures are very clear on it. Colossians, especially today, three twenty-three. Whatever you do, work at it with your heart, with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. And and. Um, how do you get that across um, to the employee in that respect? That, that's that's an important important uh, piece of scripture that hit my heart when you read that this morning, uh, and that is something that most companies try to get into uh, the employees' work um, mannerisms, their ethic, as soon as they they get hired. But I find when you're doing recruitment, it's e even more important. Some of the jobs that we recruit for are very difficult. If you're finishing furniture eight hours a day, it's, it's a dirty job. It's, right. a, it's a thankless job, and there's not a lot of glory in it. But you know what? It's a job that's here in, in the United States. It's good pay. The company never lays anybody off, and you have a hope and a future in that company if you work hard. So. We try to articulate to candidates that it, it's not all party and, and, and riches when you come right. into any organization. Be clear on what the negative points are uh, with the company so that they, they have the heads up. And, you know, it's funny because I know a lot of times business owners will quote that scripture, but there's reciprocal, reciprocal scripture, as there often is in the Bible, the Romans scripture, 4.4, now to one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. I know sometimes owners think that, you know, they're giving a check out, so they're kind of doing you a favor, you know. And I, I know especially when the economy goes down like it did in, a few years ago, um, not that I would participate in that, but uh, they, uh, a lot of times owners look at it like, you know, um, hey, you're lucky to have a job, right? Sure. Sure, and I, I, I witnessed that mm -hmm. at, at several organizations through a variety of sources and people that that owners and, and uh, executives they they didn't take the cut, but they cut the employees' wages, mm -hmm. and uh, um, I, I just think that's inappropriate. I think uh, if the company's suffering, all should suffer. So, do you teach both sides of those scriptures? I, I, absolutely, I, I I push leadership at, at, as hard as I can to get them to open up to think. In, in, in the in the right way, 
And oftentimes it's very difficult to do that because mm -hmm. they're bringing me in as a HR partner and consultant. Right. And if I have to push them on something that's contrary to what's in their heart in the moment, you know, I, I, I put our relationship in jeopardy. Right, right, right. Uh, but I, I make sure early in the relationship that I tell them that I'm going to probably tell you some things at times that you're not going to want to hear. Mm. And I hope you can respect me as a professional and as a Christian businessman that I'm doing this because I care about you and your employees and your company not just, uh, you know, my own personal viewpoint. Mm. And, and that's an important lesson for all Christians to know and learn that, uh, you know, there's a time for correcting and there's a time for favor, you know, and uh, uh, time to sow, time to reap, all those types of things. And, and I think sometimes uh, people in their relationships uh, don't recognize that and they, they don't realize that uh, even in your church relationship, for example, when a, when a pastor or an elder has to correct somebody, you have to be able to receive that correction Absolutely. and benefit from it as well, and that's God's plan. Great, great stuff, Mark. Uh, we got so much more to talk about in the next two segments. We're going to get to your book, we're going to get to your new audio segments, and so much more. So, uh, those of you who are listening, stay tuned. We've got a lot more business information for you today at Tandem Radio Live. The good news on business here every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, make sure you check out Facebook. Uh, we're on Facebook, and uh, you can visit us there and send us your questions there and see some photos and have some fun with it. We'd love to see your posts there. So Tandem Radio on Facebook. Uh, also, of course, TandemRadio.com. A lot of great, powerful info there for you, too. We'll be back right after this. Hey, welcome back to Tandem Radio Live. We're just having fun here in the studio today talking about so many good topics. And uh, we have Mark Griffin with us, who's uh, an author and uh, an HR expert, and the owner and operator of In His Name HR, and uh, just got a lot of talent under his belt. And today we're talking specifically about people, and um, people treat them right as the topic. And of course, we're talking about both sides of the fence today. We just discussed both the perspective of the owner to the employee and the employee to the owner. All those things are so important. But uh, let's talk more about your book, Mark, or, or specifically about your book, uh, which uh, I'm very excited to hear that you uh, followed through and, and got it done. Followed I know. your advice. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to have to corner that one, all right? Uh, but uh, but seriously, um, you know, so many people talk about writing books. Sure. I mean, I have three in my computer. I haven't published them yet. But uh, it took me a long time to write them, but I haven't published them yet. Uh, but you went and had the gusto and followed God's leading, and you went all the way and got it published. So let's talk about your book, How to Build Kingdom-Minded Organizations, uh, written by Mark A. Griffin. So tell us about the book, Mark. First well, off, you know, let's start with what, what got you there. You know? What got me there was really the, uh, the model that I developed on how to develop a kingdom-minded organization. I, I created a model, of presented the model to hundreds of Christian chief executive officers in, in roundtable meetings and got so much fanfare around it that I, I put a lot more energy about putting some meat and potatoes behind each aspect of it. So the, the tagline on it is good news for tumultuous times, giving your employees a hope and a future in this upside down world. And we are living in an upside down world mm. when there's no, you, you look at the media, you look at what's going on economically, the Middle East, mm, yeah. Europe, France, we have all these issues. And you know what? The only thing that employees, most employees that I talk to that have that's certain is the job that they go to every day. Eight mm. hours a day they go there and they know they're going to be going there for a job. So as business owners, Let's make it an awesome place for uh, to work. Let's make it exciting. Let's make the employees a part of that business, and let's get rocking and rolling because we really got to get our people excited at, at these companies. So, in the book itself, let's talk specifically about the book. Give us share just a couple of unique insights that are in there that might uh, get people to realize they need to read this book. Well, what's interesting about the book is it's really based on my experience working in secular uh, companies. I, I worked with some incredible executives and in human resources at the Quaker Oats organization. Joyce Ingram, Alan Collins. Alan Collins is a dynamo in human resources. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got all kinds of publications. He's a great mentor of mine. And they really taught me, when I was young in HR, a lot of great concepts on how to get mission, vision, and values into organizations, mm -hmm. how to build it into performance review processes, recruitment programs, and everything else. So I really used a lot of my secular experience to develop the model, but then I added the, the, the kingdom aspect to it 
as I started working with Christian organizations and understood what those CEOs really wanted to do with their businesses. Mm. So, um, so there's real world experience and there's stuff that actually works that you've used, right, in, in different places, and uh, stuff that um, people have taken, you know, as far as advice and directives from you and run with it. I, absolutely. And the, 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 at the beginning of the book, we talk about why do it and why we're, we're called as Christians to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we pretend we don't know that, <laughs> but, but, but we really are called to share the gospel. So. Right. As part of sharing the gospel is we share it with employees in a way that's not offensive. It's also nice to let customers know that, hey, we're a Christian organization. Mm -hmm. And what I found as I wrote this book and I did research through Barna that consumers, customers, gravitate towards Christian-owned organizations. Mm -hmm. If they know that it's a Christian organization that that market is, they tend to flock to that, that organization to buy their goods and services. So it makes business sense that you would be attractive to all types of religion, uh, you know, different religion segments. So it makes business sense. So, so why not do this? Right. Now, in the book itself, uh, can you give me one or two pointers that uh, kind of jump out at you that you think uh, business owners could really hang their hat on when they read this? I, I, I think uh, the, the greatest aspect as you read through uh, the development of the mission, vision, and values is always including your employees in the process. Mm. Because I've worked for many organizations, large organizations, medium organizations, where you get a couple executives, they jump on a plane, they go down to Barbados, mm. they come up with their mission, vision, values, they come back and they hang it on the wall and nobody cares. Nobody knows where it came from, they don't know what it means, and it grows dusty and it's ineffective. And so, they haven't bought into it. And they haven't bought into it. If you haven't bought into it, you're not going to follow it. Right. And you know, I was a se senior leader in an organization, and, and that happened to me. I was like, well, what do I do with this? It basically goes in the garbage, because I didn't know what it meant, why it meant, and how I fit into it. Mm -hmm. So you, you really have to start with that person on the third shift, uh, get into their head a little bit, get their buy-in, and get a lot of excitement about what it is that you're doing to create a hope and a future for, for the employees. That, mm -hmm. That's really what you're doing, is creating a hope and a future for the employees. Now, you mentioned the employees. Um, you know, we, Obviously, that's a big part of the equation in HR. And you mentioned something just a minute ago about the only certainty or the certainty is their eight-hour day. You know, How are people looking at that these days? Uh, are they feeling pretty certain about that? Are they, are they still concerned about whether they're going to have a job when they go to work? They, they are concerned, and, and that's why when you do things like this and, and, and you roll out a new vision, a mission, and values, it energizes people. And they see that the, the, that the leadership is paying attention to the employees and that the leadership has a vested interest in them succeeding. And, and any empowerment that you can give to folks today is going to help accelerate your organization. When employees don't know what you're working on or why you're working on it, they get nervous. Right. So the whole key is to try to communicate to them that you are working diligently to get more business, to grow the firm, to have longevity, and that you care about them financially, you care about their families, and you care about the communities that you do business in. That's important. They, they, they want to be proud citizens in the communities in which they do business in. I think that's a really key point, that uh, you don't want your employees to be nervous and jerky, you know. I mean, you, you want them to feel comfortable coming to work. You want them to be invigorated as they work. Um, and, you know, you can write lists of laws and rules. You can crack the whip all you want. It doesn't get the result. No. Yeah, so um, I like what you just said about, you know, when you, when you dig back into your mission statement and look at things and refresh, uh, I think it gives a new exuberance uh, to the employees and excitement around the office. Absolutely, it really does. And what better way to uh, grow your business than with excited employees, That's right? right. Anything else you want to tell us about the book itself? The, the, the book was a, a wonderful journey for me to go back and look at all my years of experience in human resources. It was a wonderful opportunity for me to connect with other business leaders and, 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 and bump some of these ideas uh, to them and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. I've had fabulous coaches and mentors as I wrote the book so that I, I, I could get some good feedback and some tangible ways in which I, I, I could change it. I learned a lot about myself as a business leader as mm -hmm. I wrote the book, and I did realize it is a lot more complicated than I thought. <laughs> uh, you know, authoring a book obviously is involved, right? So 
What do you think is the most powerful lesson you wrote, you gained out of writing the book? People tell you that it takes a lot more time than you w will ever imagine, and they're right. It does take an incredible amount of time. Um, there's a lot of formatting. There's a lot of rewriting to get clarity to your thoughts so right. it makes sense to, to, to the readers. It's also very important that you find some good editors, proofreaders right. that you can trust that know your voice and, and understand, and they're not just changing it to be more like them. Who did you get to, uh, from a trust standpoint, not from a grammatical error standpoint? I, I've, I, I had a variety of editors yeah. as, as I went through the process that, that, that helped me, that I trusted that they would do the, the, the right job. People that you knew or people that were People hired? that I, uh, one, one person that I hired and then uh, two people that I knew along the way, oh, professionals. Good. That way you get both a fresh view yes. and, and also a perspective from you. And the final format went to somebody that didn't know me, mm -hmm. that, that wasn't part of the editing process, that was a top business leader that could read it and, and give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on does this make sense. Right. So right. He, he was not clouded with Mark Griffin before he picked up the book. He mm -hmm. picked it up just like he picked it up in the bookstore. There you go. That was important for me. Yeah, I think that is very important. It's funny, you know, even editing, people don't realize what's involved. And I'll, I'll never forget one of my friends uh, wrote a book, uh, came out last year. It was his second book, actually. So he knew the process, and, and he had had it edited. He, he called me up, and he, he, we happened to be chatting. He goes, oh, yeah, my new book's uh, going to print this week. And he said, uh, I'll send you a copy. You, you can take a look at it and read it for me. I said, yeah, no problem. You know? So he emailed me a copy that day. And uh, I started reading it, and I found typos, you know. And so I called him right away. I said, when's this going to print? He goes, well, it's actually going to print like Monday. And I said, well, if I read it, can you make changes? Because I didn't want to say anything. He goes, yeah, if you find anything, let me know. I found 139, 139 mistakes. mistakes. <laughs> it was like a 600-page book, but, wow. but or 500 page, I sure. think. But, but the thing was that he had had editors and professionals yeah. and all kinds of people looking at it. And it happens. And I still it found does. the mistakes. It, it does happen. <laughs> Thank God we caught it, and he was able to make sure. the changes uh, beforehand. But that's exciting. I'm glad to see you brought it to fruition. You uh, you brought the book out, and uh, I know people will get some great benefits from your insights on how to build kingdom-minded organizations by Mark A. Griffin. And uh, he does have an ISBN number. He's out there, so make sure you check it out. How to build kingdom-minded organizations by Mark A. Griffin. And, uh, of course, there will be a link to the book on our website at Tandem Radio. Uh, absolutely. You can find the book on Amazon.com, but you can also just as easily go to KingdomMindedOrganizations.com. I have a landing page for the book to make it easy for people to read reviews, sign up for uh, blog updates. And, again, it's KingdomMindedOrganizations.com. Real easy to remember. Excellent. Well, we have more for you in the next segment. We're going to talk about some unique things, and uh, uh, I'm excited about uh, your new audio segment program. I think we've got 12 in the bag ready, and uh, I'm sure that after people hear those, they're going to be wanting more. So uh, we'll be talking more about that in the next segment and uh, so much more. So if you're a business owner or you're involved in business, you're going to want to stay tuned. The good news on business right here can help you cover uh, a lot of ground and uh, get you some unique insights from unique people like Mark Griffin. So, today's topic is um, People Treat Them Right, and um, this is Glenn Blake, and your host, and we'll be back right after these messages. Well, welcome back to Tandem Radio Live. This is your host, Glenn Blake, and we're the good news on business, and uh, we're here to help you and do our best to guide you uh, to see God's Word in your business life and uh, to realize that there's just so much in Scripture that God wants you to know about doing business that... Uh, uh, it's right there for you, and we try to bring it out each week. And again, at TandemRadio.com, there's just a lot of powerful information there that can help your business every day. So uh, we hope that you'll check out, check us out there on a regular basis and see the new things that are listed. Uh, check out our archi archive shows. You'll not only be able to hear our shows, but also see them on video there. And uh, we even have our, ta our Ask Tandem segment. Don't forget that with Cooper Ford. Ask Tandem is, uh, comes out every week on YouTube, and they're just... Uh, a lot of good stuff for there, especially for young professionals. It's geared towards the young professionals, and uh, we get to give them our business advice and uh, help them with questions that they ask. So Ask Tandem uh, is another powerful segment on video, on YouTube, on the Internet, uh, that you can get from Tandem Radio. We're here with our guest today, Mark A. Griffin, who's the author of a new book, How to Build Kingdom-Minded Organizations. Uh, we just talked about that in the last segment, and uh, it's a, a powerful book from perspective and from someone who's got 
not only uh, extensive experience in Fortune 500 companies, but also in owning his own business and helping uh, Christian-based businesses grow and expand and so forth. And uh, Mark also uh, is a man of many talents. Not only does he own the company um, in his name HR, where they can help your firm uh, to develop a, a whole culture that is conducive to growing and expanding your business in his name HR, uh, but Mark also has uh, some new audio segments uh, that are out there as well, and uh, he just has so much information going on, uh, and we're excited about having Mark uh, in the studio again. Mark, thanks for coming in today. Thank you, Glenn. I'm excited to be here. Oh, no problem. Let's talk about uh, your new audio segments. Uh, we've covered so much ground in the first three segments. Let's, let's focus on this, because I know there's a lot more there than we can talk about today, uh, and we definitely want people to tune in uh, every Wednesday and, and check out the latest one. They'll be on the website on tandemradio.com. But let's talk about that for a minute. Give us some of the uh, gist of why you put together these 12 segments. Well, what's interesting, Glenn, what's, what, what's really exciting about these audio segments is, is it basically parallels the book that I just uh, launched. And what's really unique about the audio um, series is listeners can listen to my voice, they can hear me being interviewed, and they can get a greater depth uh, of understanding of what it means when I say, why do we need to build a kingdom company? That's, that's mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the chapters in the audio segments is, is why. So we have a dialogue and we talk about why it, it's important. Then other chapters that are in the book uh, mimic the audio segments as well. So when we talk about a vision and what a vision is, you can read the book, you can understand it uh, from a reading standpoint, but then you can also hear uh, me being interviewed on what that vision is and how to create it. So you get some additional experience, advice, and uh, uh, information from the audio. So there, even though it uh, kind of uh, uses the book as a guide, there's much more depth in there. Is what it, it goes much deeper, and uh, the, the other exciting element of it is I infuse past experiences and, and present experiences with the organizations that I've worked at, so I bring real, real world uh, issues and problems that, that we solved using this information. Mm. So what are some of the topics? Uh, I mean, we can't go through all of them, but hit us with some of the topics on these 12 segments. Well, uh, initially we talk about vision, mission, values, again, which is in the book, but some things that aren't in the book that we talk about is uh, how to get non-performers off the bus. <laughs> how, how do you manage a non-performer and, and, and give them the feedback and do it with uh, grace and treat them with dignity and respect and get them off the bus? So, you know, relative to that, getting them off the bus, I mean, uh, you basically mean getting them up and productive or getting them out of the company? <laughs> no, we talk about getting them off the bus. We do have another segment where, uh, that we talk about managing employees to their potential. Right. How, how do we get employees to, to grow, to uh, become greater skilled, to get uh, greater education, and how do we get them to help prosper the company? So. We, we, we talk about getting them off the bus, but we also talk about developing them as well. And what are some of the other segments? Some of the other segments is how to hire the best people. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, many people think, well, you know, we almost have 20% unemployment, which is probably the real number. And there's so many people out there that are available for work, it should be a piece of cake to, to hire people. Right. It, it's just not true. Mm -hmm. uh, I have several positions that have literally been taking months to find the right appropriate candidate that fits into the organization that's going to that's gonna do well. So we talk about how to hire, how to vet folks, uh, what tools are available out there, what signs to look for, uh, how to comfort the applicant during the interview process. Right. Well, it, it's amazing because, uh, you know, I, I've been going through that process because one of my companies is growing and we continue to hire people. And uh, it's funny you mention that because it took me um, almost a year to find the salespeople that I wanted. And it was so funny because I interviewed for a long time. And uh, I finally, when I was finally found a good candidate, I actually found three at the same time. <laughs> so That's I had to decide happens. which one to go with, you know. That's what happens. But sales candidates right now are, are very difficult to recruit for. I know good, in ones. Central, good, good ones. In central Pennsylvania, I have a couple sales-related positions, and it's very difficult to find people that are good with the, with the skills to fit into that culture of that organization. I mean, I'd like to hear your theory on it, but one of my theories on this is that you know, yes, I agree. I think unemployment's you know more like 14, 15 percent, or probably double the number they're telling us. 
Um, but I, I really honestly think, and maybe I'm off base, I think half of those people don't want to be employed. I, I think they don't want to be employed. They may have other things that they're working on, other side jobs or whatnot. But, but quite frankly, when you interview a lot of people and they open up, what they tell you is uh, they may be in a situation, depending on what the company is going to pay, that their unemployment is very close to what the company is right. paying. Mm -hmm. So they don't have a lot of financial incentive, uh, especially in manufacturing positions. We have a lot of candidates that come in, they're going to make more on unemployment than what the current company is paying. I also get the feeling from many candidates that they are nervous about going to a new employer because mm -hmm. their trust level is a lot lower, right. because they don't know the employer, they don't know the longevity, how well they're going to do. So. I, I really work with companies to help them develop a marketing strategy mm -hmm. so that they can share the best of what they have to offer to, to uh, prospective employees. Well, you know, it's uh, we could go off on a lot of tangents relative to the unemployment situation and people working, and you know, I think entitlements play an issue in that as well. I think that uh, um, maybe the, all these unemployment extensions are not such a good idea, but we'll save that for another time. Any other topics you want to hit on? I mean, there's a whole bunch there I know that you have, but we're in the last two minutes of the segment. Sure. The, the, uh, the one segment that we also include in the audio is how to manage company culture. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. great, great segment on how to capture what your company culture is, right. define it, and then put practices in place to maintain it or shift it if you need to shift it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we're excited about this. Uh, these 12 new audio segments, and I'm, I'm sure, Mark, that once people hear the 12, they're going to be asking for more. So I'm sure we'll continue it, and we will be, uh, we will have them. You can ha listen to them on tandemradio.com. Feel free to check out the website and look for Mark Griffin's information there. And you'll also find a link there to his book again, "How to Build Kingdom-Minded Organizations" by Mark A. Griffin. Um, and you can get that on Amazon as well or through our website. And, uh, of course, these audio segments, I'm real excited about them because I know you put a lot of work into them. Thank you, Glenn. I'm excited about them as well. Well, it's great to have you in the studio again. I really appreciate you coming down. Uh, again, you're listening to Tandem Radio, and uh, we are here on the 6th. Bridge FM radio stations are uh, going uh, up and down the East Coast, and in addition to that, on tandemradio.com. And don't forget also the apps. Uh, Bridge Radio has an app on um, not only the Droid, but on the iPhone as well. And uh, I know when I travel, I listen to the Bridge through my Droid, uh, and the app is just incredible. Uh, you just touch one button and you're listening live, and uh, it's amazing from anywhere in the world. I want to thank our team today. I want to thank Lucas for coming down from Rutgers to help us with engineering. I want to thank our producer, Allie, who uh, helped us put together an amazing day. There's a lot more that happens here in the studio than most people realize. I want to thank Cooper for spending so, time, so much time on the videos and uh, getting his Ask Tandem segment going. And, and uh, Mark and I are going to step out right up to the show and, and do an Ask Tandem segment. And you want to check those out and spread those around on YouTube. Your friends could use those and get some real valuable information out of those videos. It's been fun sharing with you today. God bless you. He wants to bless you. He wants to show you his favor. All you need to do is seek him. And uh, we hope that uh, we're able to point to you again the clear, clear um, uh, image of what God has in mind for you and for your business. Uh, it's in his word. He talks about business a lot. And uh, the scriptures for today, uh, just another clear point. Uh, Colossians 3.23. Just wanna, this goes for business owners and for employees and everyone else for that matter. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Remember, he's watching. He's the ultimate employer and he's the one who wants to see you succeed. And uh, we have so much more for you in the weeks ahead and the months ahead. Stay tuned as we continue to bring the good news on business to you to help you grow your business, expand your business, and so much more. Info at tandemradio.com. Email us at info at tandemradio.com. And we will get back to you. We'll pray for your business. Uh, we'll do our best to direct you in the right uh, place to go to get the information you need to make things happen. So info at tandemradio.com. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you next week. You've been listening to The Good News on Business, a Tandem Radio live broadcast heard here on the Bridge FM Radio Network and streaming at tandemradio.com. Don't forget to join us every Saturday at 11 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time and call us and email us with your questions because we'd love to hear from you. You can also visit our website for the latest blogs from Peter and Glenn along with other information about upcoming guests, events, and business opportunities. I'm Kevin Reeves, and from everyone at Tandem Radio, 
We hope that you have a blessed week. And remember, walk with the Lord every day in every way.